Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I am going to be making up this guillotine tool, or rather I'm going to be adapting this guillotine tool to work with my fly press that I recently bought. Um, and uh, that Sweeney and Blockage fly press, that's about a six ton fly press. So I'm super excited about this. Um, this here is just a one inch bolt basically that I threaded a nut up on and then chopped off the threads ends of it and uh, I chopped off the bolt head and we used that in a different video. I'll try to link that up somewhere up here or put it just down in the description if you will and you can go check out that video where we gave it a first run. But anyways, so what I need to do, I've already got this all prepped up. What I need to do is I actually need to get this welded on top of here. Now you might be asking why do you need a guillotine tool to fit under the fly press when the fly press you can just put tooling in it itself. Well for anybody who has watched the previous video my fly press is really tall. It has a lot of clearance space but that means the ram doesn't come all the way down so I have to block things up in order to put tooling in there. So the quickest way around that, at least for right now, eventually I will build a base for it, is to use a guillotine tool. That way I can have all my dies held and I can block this up on top of something and I can close that gap fairly quickly. Most of the time, the fly press is gonna be used in operations um, you know, where a guillotine tool might be handy already as it is. And so it's really cheap and easy to get smaller die material like this than having to build something out of big blocky dies and, and build up to where you can do the same thing as what the guillotine tool would do in the first place. So that's kind of my reasoning or my thinking behind it. We'll see how that turns out after a little bit. So this particular guillotine tool, I've got dies in it that are set up for necking down pipe. And we're actually going to go do that here in a little bit. Basically, you just get your pipe through here like so. And then it's got a pair of V dies in it, 90 degree swedges, if you will. And that's to help compress and neck down pipe. So we'll do some forging on this thing right after we get this welded up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing uh, tack welded up first. We'll go to the fly press, we'll use it to make sure everything's nice and square, take it back off, and then we'll do our full weld to finish this thing up. So we'll just get this on here. I'm gonna put flats to flats. That means the diamonds are gonna stick out this way on this nut here. I'm gonna to try to make sure it's mostly centered, as centered as I can get it. That's a big key thing with any sort of presses. Anything that's misaligned, you're putting lateral forces and stresses on your uh, tooling, and that's gonna be bad. That's why I wanna make sure everything's good and square and centered and everything like that. All right, I think we're good to go. Go ahead and fire this up. Ah, I just messed it up, didn't I? Let's try it again. Get this all centered up nicely. It's centered from that direction. That way, that way's good. All right, so I'm going to put a tack on the left and the right-hand side. quickly when you do that because you don't want one side to lift over the other. All right, let's go put this in the fly press and run the fly press ram down on it to try to get this squared up nicely.
using the fly press to square this up is a good way of getting everything straight and making sure everything sits nice and flush the way it ought to. Can we weld this back up so nothing's hitting crooked anymore? Because that's the key. We don't want to put undue stress on the fly press ram and or our tooling or our weld joints. So just having that fly press, using that for that six tons of pressure really helps out. All right, let's go get it welded up. out. There you have it. It's all good to go, looks like. Looks like we're good to go there. I didn't put any weld on the top of the nut here, and hopefully you guys can see that. Let me look. check it out real quick. Yep. I didn't put any weld on the top of this nut here because this area here needs to sit nice and flush. I need to have a really nice flush space for this to um, connect with the actual fly press across the face. If there's any ridges in here, that'll start feeding and wedging this tool into the fly press opening, which I don't want to have to rebore the ram on that. So that's why we're going to keep it exactly the way it is right now. Um, and you know, keep it where there's no weld around here. So we just put it on like that and this helps distribute the load. So without further ado, let's go over to the forge and we'll get a piece of pipe nice and hot and we'll get to forging and check this puppy out.
okie doke. So there he goes, folks. As you can see, pretty simple um, tool. Makes a really neat effect here for forging down pipe. <laughs> so that tool is going to come real in handy for a lot of different type pipe jobs, candle, um, candle making for candle holders, candlestick holders, stuff like that. Uh, anytime you need to neck down pipe. Another good use for it would be making cattails as well. So having a guillotine tool with a V-shaped dies in it uh, to help collect the material faster is a really great way of necking down pipe. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, comment down below what you thought of the video, and uh, if, you love the vid if you love the videos I do and you want to help support them, a great way of you doing that is either checking out that join button underneath and becoming a channel member, like the people you've been seeing rolling across the screen currently, or you can go check out our website, blacksmithpds.com, and, con and consider purchasing a power hammer blank of some sort over there. So that's it for today. God bless each and every last one of you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.